Howdy friends, welcome back to Plumbing with Tim. Join me today as I demonstrate to you how to hook up wire a 240 volt 30 amp quick disconnect for an electric water heater. So I'm currently in the middle of building a new cabin out here in Western Kentucky. And in the state of Kentucky, if you're building the home and you're the homeowner, you're allowed to wire your own house. Now I can already hear the comments, Tim, what the heck does this got to do with plumbing? Everything. Come on, let's go inside and get started. All right, so we're up in the cabin here in Western Kentucky. We've got a lot of stuff done, but we've got so much more to do. Wintertime's coming. We're trying to at least get inside here before the cold weather hits and stuff. So we're working inside the utility room today, and one of the last things that needs to get hooked up and wired in is a quick disconnect for the water heater, which is by code usually here in these parts. Let's head over to that room, and I'll show you what we're doing. Now here in the utility room, this is where the water heater is going to go, okay? Let me show you what we had to do to get to this point with the disconnect box, which is simply mounted here to the unfinished wall and stuff. Let's head over to the breaker panel. As you can see at this point, we do not have any of the panel hooked up. I'm going to get a licensed electrician to come out and do that, as well as hook up my meter base outside. All right, here on the back side electric panel inside the house, got a whole gaggle of wires of all the stuff that I've ran through the cabin and stuff, and this is what we're working with. This is a 10-2, 30 amp, 240 volt wire that's ready to get hooked up to the panel. So we have no power inside of here right now. Everything you see, a fan, the lights, whatever, all ran from my meter over on my other property in from an outlet and extension cords. But this is the tail end that's going into the meter box. That's gonna be taken care of by the electrician. Let's head back over to where the water heater is and I'll show you the other end. All right, you look closely. Here's my line coming down. It's all been ran overhead from the electrical panel over to our disconnect that we're hooking up today. This is just a straight line. There's nothing else that's running through it and everything. 10-2 gauge means it's 10 gauge wire with two wires plus ground. Let's go ahead and hook this up. All right, let's go ahead and open up this disconnect box. All right, just kind of set it into place. As you can see up here, this is the fuse or it's the disconnect. They don't sit in there very tight. You simply pull them out and that disconnects power. If there is power going to this, which there isn't right now, and if that's the case, you can take and flip this thing over and slide it back in, which means that'd be in the off position. All right, first thing we're gonna do, now that this is open, I'm gonna take a little flathead screwdriver. And we're gonna just pop this bottom panel off. See all the connection points here. I'll explain to you exactly what they are and how to connect this all up. Now, if you look closely, I've already popped out one of the holes in here and put a Romax connector to come in from the back side which will be inside the wall and one down here at the bottom which the line coming out going to the water heater will be coming out through there on these Romax connectors. All right pay attention now here I have my 30 amp 240 volt line that's coming from our panel. I'm going to go in through the back Romax. See that? I'm going to bring it in from the back to accommodate it careful don't skin any wires get it where it needs to be leave yourself enough room where you have some playroom just like that all right now that we're at this point what we want to do is take the casing off of this particular wire I got a razor knife nice and easy usually want to try to do this down the middle make a slice without slicing in to all the rest of the wires straight down the middle like that and pull your coating back see that I'm going to take the razor knife and cutting away from the wires to get that excess off there. At this point, you'll see some paper and stuff that's around there. Go ahead and just take and pull that paper off and separate your lines. So you've got three different lines in here. This is a 10-2 wire, which means it has two wires. It's 10 gauge, and the third one is ground. What I'm going to do is we're going to take and we're going to strip off about a half inch from the black and the white. I have a pair of quick strip pliers here, or you can use the uh, standard ones, the Kleins, whatever you want to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take our black wire first, stick it in here. We're going to skin about half inch off there. See that? We're going to do the same with the white. Just like that. I've got two wires that are ready to go, as well as the ground. 
identify it with a regular flathead screwdriver, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and loosen this bottom connector up. These are for the ground. This is a ground block. We're going to loosen it up and we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our ground wire set in there first. Pay attention. Here's our ground, our bare wire. See that? I'm going to take and I'm going to loop it down in here far enough where it's out of the way and we're going to bring it in through the side. Well, hopefully you can see this. Kind of like that. See that? I've got it inside of that connection. Take a flathead screwdriver and tighten that thing up. And there's our first ground. Okay, so before we add these other two lines to the disconnect, Usually on the newer type, if you look up closely on these little areas, right here, and right here, and right here, you're going to see the two that are in the middle that say load. The two outside ones say line. Let me explain to you what the difference is. Your 30 amp wire that is 240 volts is coming from the panel. Both of those lines, the black and the white, are hot. The ones that are coming in that we're working on need to be set on line. The two that are coming out and going to your heater need to be set on load. All right, here we go. These are the lines coming from the panel. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our black line. We're going to loosen up our outside connections. One on the far left and one on the far right. Just like that. Those are going to be the two sides. And at this point, it doesn't matter whether it's black on the right white on the right doesn't matter i'm going to take the black one we're going to shove it up we're going to kind of bend it out of the way and kind of get it in there if you watch it's going to slide up into that little block make sure it gets in there take a flathead screwdriver at this point tighten that thing down nice and tight we don't want no shaking no loose no arcs just like that now i have my white one we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that one. We're going to slide it up on the far right. Remember, these are lines, not loads. And this is the power that's coming in from our panel. Just like that. Nice and tight. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, let's take a quick moment and review. You saw a 30 amp, 240 volt line that was ran from the panel, across the ceiling, down the post, and into our quick disconnect panel. We split them apart. We took each one of these lines are considered line which is both hot. They're both hot lines. Not one's a neutral, not one's a load. They're both hot. So they go on the outside connections. One on the left, one on the right. And then we put our ground in. Let me show you what we do next. All right, so we have another piece of 30 amp, 240 volt, 10-2 wire. We're gonna do the same thing here outside of the box where we get started and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skin that sheath off there. See? We just kind of pull it off the same way we did the other kind. Now this line here is the line that's going to come out of the quick disconnect and go to the water heater. But the water heater isn't here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to skin the ends off the white and the black like we did before. Kind of like that. Black the same way. Just like that. See that? Let's head back over to the quick connect. This time we're going to take those three wires. We're going to bring up to the bottom Romax connector. Because this will be coming straight out and going over to the water heater. Now some of you folks out there would say, well Tim, why don't you put some protective conduit around there? Well we would, but this isn't going to be outside. You would usually put protective conduit around there, especially if you're hooking up like an air conditioner. And it has to be weatherized and so the rain and all that stuff doesn't get in here but in this case because it's my home i could for decoration purposes but you just need to have your wire in here and it's always good to make sure to you put your romax connectors in there because once they get all tightened down and make sure that these things aren't going to move around and cause an arc all right same thing business as usual first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take my ground wire we're going to loosen up this one side where it's going to go in like that Wrap it back around. This is why you want extra wires in here so you have room to work with. Kind of get to the point where you can take and stuff that back in that block. See how I did that? It's back up in that block. Now I can tighten that down. That's our second ground wire 
that's in this quick disconnect box. We get it done and out the way. Nice, tight, and snug. You don't want nothing moving, no arcing. Next, we're going to take our black wire. And we're going to stay in form and uniform. These two wires are going to get hooked up to the two middle ones, which are actually called load. There goes the black line going up to one in the middle. Now, it could be on the left or the right. doesn't make any difference at all. There we go. Go ahead and we'll lock that in. Hope you can see this. We'll get that tightened down all the way. See that? We're just kind of black and black, white and white. We could reverse them around. Doesn't make any difference. We'll loosen up that second block that's in the middle. And here comes the other white one. There she goes. Tighten that thing down. Nice and tight. Voila. Bang. See that? Not rocket science by any means. Always make sure though you have the difference between your lines and your loads. Your loads are the two that are in the middle are the outgoing to your appliance. The two incoming are on line and they're always hot and they'll be on the outside. All right, at this point, we're ready to reattach our cover. Now, look, on this particular model, it's got a couple little dog ears are going to slip in up underneath these two hooks right here. Watch. And then you simply just push it back into place like that. Now to put the disconnect, which is already sitting there in the off position, back into the on position. Just like that, close her up, ready to go. Our right, last thing we have to do is just take this whip that we attached to the quick disconnect which will be going to our water heater as soon as it gets here and just kind of roll it up and get it out of the way. Something like that. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video of how to wire and install a 30 amp 240 volt quick disconnect for electric water heater. If you don't know what you're doing, stop what you're doing and call yourself a licensed electrician. If you got any comments, questions, leave them down below and don't forget to keep plumbing.